Hey guys, welcome to Brian's Man Cave. So today I want to talk about homebrews. Um, and I've talked a little bit about homebrews before. Um, I actually make my own home, well, program my own homebrews as well. Um, but this topic kind of came from um, a video I was watching, Mike's Gaming Gala. And he's talking about the, the, the newer and the older Ghostbusters uh, homebrews that were uh, created for the Intellivision. In fact, well, one has already been out for a while, um, and I remember trying to learn about that, but I couldn't find a lot of information on it. Uh, even in one of the Intellivision groups, they said that uh, they stopped talking about the game. They didn't want to open up conversations about it anymore. I kind of had to hunt around, and I still didn't find much information on it when I was looking. But uh, more information has now surfaced in that the uh, they, they did a special release of this game, uh, I think they said 50 copies of it. And then there's another Ghostbusters game that got released, uh, or is in the process of being released, I should say, um, for the Intellivision, but it's a different uh, producer, different programmer, and all that other stuff. And the topic, I guess this topic that came to mind, was what Mike said in his video about how authentic i guess the game should look and and i i even remember seeing a post in one of the uh you know postings for it i think it was on papa pete's post um saying that uh you know or i guess it was the creator the programmer of the first game asking or questioning why a ghostbusters game had to be made again when there already exists one and in fact even myself being a programmer for the intellivision i often um, make sure, or I try to make sure when I think of a game that I want to, like, say, port or, or, you know, recreate, that somebody hasn't already done it. And it doesn't matter if, to me, if, if the, the version was good or not good or whatever, I just don't, I don't want to personally make a game that's already been created. That being said, it brings this topic to mind about the authenticity or how it should look how a game a modern well, a new game for the Intellivision or any other system for that matter any homebrew that's being created for a previous system that that doesn't is not on the market anymore sh how close should the game look to being something that it would have looked like if it came out during that time period now we, you got to think about the Intellivision's limitations the programmers limitations back in the day uh, versus today. I mean, we have tools to help us that they didn't have. We have ample amounts of, of memory space we could have on our cartridges. Uh, we have emulation. We have a lot of things uh, to our advantage today that they didn't have back then. So when you think about games like, you know, Ghostbusters, this is the Atari 2600 version of Ghostbusters. The limitations of the system back then and when they created it um, you know, maybe somebody today could actually make a better, more decent Atari 2600, um, version of this game. Uh, it's hard to say. Uh, I don't, I don't program for the Atari. I, I'm going to look into that in the future, but I don't know myself. But when I think about when I go to create a game, do I want it to look like something that would have come out, how it would have looked when it came out, or do I want it to be more graphics, more sounds, voices, you know, something that's just going to blow you away, um, that's going to look like something that came out more on a Nintendo than the Intellivision. And of course, this was brought up with this new Ghostbusters game being that, you know, if I show you this picture and then we compare that to, say, this one, which is the, the newer, more updated version. Um, clearly, you can see that the graphics are different. And... Um, Partly in, in due part is that the first one, they wanted to create the game to make it look like um, how it would have looked. And I kind of did the same thing when I created uh, the Keystone Cops game. I looked at the graphics and I thought, well, how would Keystone Capers look on the Intellivision? And I kind of made it that way. I could have taken a whole different approach or, you know, uh, made it a lot more jazzier and maybe added more bells and whistles to it. But I decided to make it look like, hey, this is what Keystone Capers probably would have looked like if it got a, an Intellivision release. And I don't think that that's a bad thing. I don't think that 
Um, you know, I know there's a lot of question in the homebrew community about, you know, what they're going to accept as being a good, decent game or worth putting their money on. Um, for instance, when I did uh, this game, Fast Food, or, uh, yeah, Fast Food, I thought I grabbed the wrong box here, Fast Food, um, when I first created it and I, and I started to show it to some of the testers, one of the feedbacks I got was that, you know, the game looks pretty, but it's very basic. Um, and, and that was because I did a direct port of the, of the Atari 2600 version. And so someone was like, you know, I can't see myself playing this for more than five minutes. People today in the homebrew world, they expect more. They want more. And so when I thought about it, I was like, okay, perhaps there should be other levels. And, and suggestions started coming in from the testers. Yeah, you should have more levels to it. You should jazz it up. You should make it a little bit more, in, you know, different. Add, add flair to it. And I did that, and it, so and, and I essentially like to call it fast food plus because there's all these extra levels that didn't exist. I kind of said that in my my other video when I was talking about my game pickups and and Yar's Revenge. Um, you know, it's very faithful to the original. This is exactly what you would expect um, the Yar's Revenge would have looked like if it made it onto the Intellivision during the official release time. Um, you know, you wouldn't expect it to have anything other than that. But today's day and age, we have, um, well, let me just grab another box here. Games like this, where you get, like, fantastic, like, really, really great-looking graphics. Uh, this is an Electronite release. And, you know, it's got the sound, it's got voice, it's got, um, you know, it's tip-top, it's polished off, and it looks great. Um... You know, and I'm sure there's people that will only want to buy stuff like that. They're going to say, well, if I want the older games, um, I'm going to play the older games. But anything that's coming out today, I want it to look polished. I want it to look good. But I'm sure there's still the others who is like, no, I like the old style. I like the old graphics. I want my games to look like it w it should look on an Intellivision. Because, frankly, if you want the better graphics and sound and all that stuff... Go to a different system, maybe, <laughs> you know, if you want the Nintendo. I mean, there was, um, you know, obviously Nintendo made Ghostbusters. So did Sega. Uh, this is the Master System one. I bought this a few years back, and I still haven't even tried it yet. But it looks great from the, from the cover or from the package. But anyways, yeah, I mean, you could always just say, well, if you want the better graphics, go to the next system, the next generation system. But I think there's a charm to having these games exist on a, on a system that you grew up with or love and being able to see what it can and is capable of doing. Um, you know, obviously the gameplay mechanics, like for instance, the Ghostbusters, uh, using this again, the game is the same. I mean, if you play Ghostbusters here, it's practically the same as playing it here. It just has a few you know, this one obviously has a few extra bells and whistles that this one doesn't. Um, but it's the same concept. You got the same, you're trying to make money, you buy a car. You're, well, uh, actually in the uh, Atari one, you don't you don't get to choose your car. It's actually the same with the, uh, the first edition of that Ghostbusters game for the Intellivision. You get the one car, that's it. You're one and done. Um, but at the same time, you know, you're, you're looking at different variants of the game. I don't know. I mean, I, I grew up playing the uh, Commodore 64 version, which was the first one, I believe. I'm pretty certain was the first one. Um, and it had everything in it. And that's the thing. The game doesn't really change. It doesn't, as I was kind of getting towards, it's the same game. I mean, you're just, you're just adding in, you know, some screenshots or maybe you're adding in some extra voice tones or whatever. But the game itself doesn't change. There's no other levels. Like, I believe... The, uh, the the Nintendo one does have an extra level of going up a staircase, which I've seen videos on. I think the Angry Video Game Nerd talked about it a few times and how it's almost impossible to, to get up that staircase. You know, stuff like that, like adding in extra levels of flair. But at the at the end of the day, it's the same game. And, you know, how, how much more can you make the game that, say, people that are going to want something like this are really going to care um it's it's a good question there's a bunch of these games i could show examples 
of, you know, this one here, of uh, the Pandora incident. Um, this is a, a, an amazing game for the Intellivision. The fact that it, it, it exists. Um, and if, if you're really into that style of game, the grinding. Um, another example is my Napoleonic Wars game. Um, this is something where uh, it started out as being just a very basic board game look to it to being a polished off game which has a lot of extra graphics and stuff but in the end it is still just a board game so whether people are going to actually care about well it's got better graphics i'm going to want it or if they're more concerned about the gameplay or the authenticity of it being that it looks like uh, an old blocky and television game and that's what i want um, it's very interesting to, to see that the, the you know the division. I'm sure some of people are like I, I want them all. I want both. I want I want the classic look. I I, I don't want the classic look. You know I I don't mind about the the modern look. It's it's an interesting thing. Anyways, yeah, I just wanted to throw it out there. Uh, just watching those two videos, uh, those few videos on the new Ghostbusters and basing it on the old one, and why why do we why did we need it and. I'm sure a lot of people appreciate it. They want the new stuff. They want they want it to look that way. Anyways, let me know what you think. Throw some comments down below. Hope you subscribe. We'll talk to you later.